Hello, Ashley here from the Mediterranean Movement. I wanted to talk to you today about New Year's resolutions. I know a lot of us set them, a lot of us hope to achieve them, but did you know that some studies show that up to 80% of New Year's resolutions fail? As someone who often sets New Year's resolutions, this number was terrifying to me. Luckily, there are a lot of smart people out there who study this kind of thing, and there's some great research. I wanted to share with you some of the top reasons that people are not successful and some things you can do to overcome these reasons. Believe me, I know about all of these because I have so been there with all of them. <laughs> so the number one reason is failing to plan. This is a big one. How many times have we set a goal for ourselves or told ourselves we wanted to do something, whether that's drink more water, eat less sugar, whatever it is. And then we just make decisions on the fly and hope that we will remember the goal that we've made and make decisions based on that goal. Honestly, this works for about maybe a couple of hours, but then life gets in the way, we fall back into the same patterns that we've been falling into and it doesn't work out. You need a plan. I need a plan if we're going to be successful. You need to have it spelled out, in writing, exactly what you're planning to do. If you're hoping to get more energy, feel better in the new year by eating healthier, what exactly does that look like? Are you cutting out sugar, some sugar or all sugar? Are you going to eat more plants like vegetables and fruit? If so, how much more? All these things, if you spell them out, then you're planning and then you may succeed. Number two, no accountability. Now, Gretchen Rubin wrote a really interesting book on this called The Four Tendencies. So you can certainly check that out, but I will summarize it for you very briefly here. Through extensive research, she found that there are essentially four different kinds of people in the world in relation to how we accomplish goals. So some people are driven primarily by internal factors and motivation and Having a goal, setting a goal, is enough to help them accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. But way more than half the population is externally motivated, meaning that it doesn't matter how strong your internal motivation is, how strong your why is, you need somebody else knowing about that goal, putting a little bit of pressure on you about that goal in order to actually reach it. Now I am 100% this way. I don't like that I'm this way. I would love to be internally motivated, but you know what? There's no need to fight it. If I'm trying to exercise more, I need to set up dates to meet up with people who will do it with me. If I'm trying to say, be more patient with my kids, then I need to let my husband in on it so he can help hold me accountable. And it's the same with changing our diet. If you're trying to make big changes to your health or to your diet, get friends involved, talk about it on Facebook, join a group. If you're one of those people who needs accountability, make sure you get that for yourself so you can be in the 20% of people who actually achieve their New Year's resolutions. Let's see, number three, this is another big one, perfectionism. Also known as the all or nothing mentality. It sounds something like this. I can't work out for an hour today, so I'm just not gonna do anything at all. It's not worth it. Or, I ate that cookie, I wasn't planning on eating, and now the day is ruined, my diet is ruined, so I'm just gonna start over tomorrow. Eat all the cookies now. We've all been there, at least I have been there many times. So part of overcoming this mentality is knowing that it's there and consciously choosing to do something over nothing Remembering that, of course, every big goal is made up by hundreds or thousands of tiny little actions that you take every day. So even the little small ones count. Another big way to overcome this kind of perfectionist mentality is by celebrating not the milestones that you hit, but actually taking the action. So instead of celebrating that you lost five pounds, for example, Celebrate that every day you walked for 15 minutes or every day you chose a salad at lunch. 
because ultimately you can't actually control when you hit those milestones, but you can control the actions that you're taking. And in a weird paradox, if you're focusing on the actions that you're taking, you're more likely to hit those milestones. It's really impactful actually if you recognize them in writing by keeping a visual tally sheet, um, you know, putting that up on your fridge or somewhere where you'll see it and marking every day that you're doing whatever small action it is that you're looking to take. You know, after you hit a week or several days of tally marks, then reward yourself again for taking those actions and seeing those little tally marks, very, very motivating. So if you are planning to set New Year's resolutions this year, I hope some of these tips have helped you. I know I am going to try out several of them as well. If you are looking to gain energy by healthier eating in the new year, I encourage you to check out our nutrition program. We have a Reclaim Your Energy program designed specifically to help you make gentle, effective lifestyle modifications. Uh, takes into account all three of these traps. So we have the program fully planned out for you. There's tons of accountability in our Facebook group with other people going through the program. And we have built in avoiding the perfectionism trap as well. The program starts on January 17th. It's four weeks long. Head on over to themedimove.com to check it out. And whether or not we see you in the program, I wish you a very happy new year. And I hope you're in that 20% that hits those resolutions. Talk to you later.